we're going to talk a little bit about examining the model fit. Now, we're going to do it in the context of logistic regression, although most of the ideas that we're going to talk about extend beyond just logistic regression um, to other models as well. So, when we have a, a model that's fit and we've checked the assumptions and so on, there's kind of two broad categories of, of looking at how well the model fits. So there's things like R-squared type measures, okay, and there's things called goodness of fit tests. What I'm going to do is quickly explain in concept what each of these are, and then in some separate videos we'll explore them. I'll go in another video where I'll talk conceptually a bit about some of the R-squared type measures, and then we'll also have a video where we look in R at getting some of these R-squared type measures from R and interpreting some of them or pointing you to sources that can uh, allow you to read a bit more about them. And then the goodness of fit test, I'm not going to say too much beyond what I do here, although in some of the R scripts provided for um, this week and, um, yeah, just this week, not next, there's going to be an opportunity for you to examine goodness of fit if you want. On the website, I've linked to some papers you can read about goodness of fit. So this will not be assessed in the course at all, but it's there as optional reading material if you wanted to dig a little bit deeper into that. So they're, they're related, but what I'm going to do is try and tease them apart for you. So R squared type measures, what those really try and get at is the idea of how well can you predict right, or estimate the outcome. Variable. So, you know, what's the predictive strength in some sense of your model? How, how good is it at estimating the outcome? And goodness of fit tests are trying to get at the idea of is the model correctly specified? And what we mean by that is, are you missing certain x variables? Um, are you missing an interaction term? Um, are you missing, are there, I guess, non-linearities that you're not addressing? Things like these. So, I'm going to draw some examples in a moment to try and tease these two apart. Before I do that, maybe let me point to this here. Goodness of fit tests have a null hypothesis that the model fits well versus an alternative hypothesis there is a lack of fit. Often abbreviated LOF. Okay, so this this is one test that starts off with a. Uh, I guess you want you want to fail to reject the null, right? You don't want there to be evidence that there's a lack of fit. Small p-value tells you there's a lack of fit. You're missing something in your model. Your model is not um, correctly specified. It's not um, capturing the observed relationship in the data well. Now, what I want to try and show you is it's possible to have models that have low R squared but are good fits. And it's possible to have models that have really high R squares but are poor fits. So what I'm going to do is draw some textbook examples. Okay, they're going to be exaggerated but to make the point. So first, and I'm going to do it in the context of linear regression just because data for linear regression is easy to draw and visualize and think about, and the concept extends perfectly to logistic. So suppose here's x and here's y, and here's a scatter plot of the data. Now, if we fit a regression model to this, it's going to look something like that. So I'd say this model here is going to have a low R squared, okay. or not a really high R squared. Right? It's not going to be 
um, making very accurate predictions. There's going to be a lot of variability. Um, but it's a good fit. And what I mean by that is the line accurately represents the relationship we're observing. Okay, so the model fits the data well. It is the correct model for this data. It's just not, um, not a strong predicted model. Now let's look at another example. And again, one that's exaggerated in a little bit textbook, but to make a point. Suppose we have data that look like this. Okay. So I've tried to draw with a little bit of curvature there. Now, if we fit a regression line to this, we're going to fit something like that. Now, if we fit this, this is going to have a high R squared. Right? The observations are actually pretty close to the line. It's going to have pretty small prediction error. Right? It's going to be a model of high R squared, but this is a bad fit, right? a poor fit, or there's a lack of fit. Right? Meaning, while the R squared is high, this model doesn't actually accurately represent the relationship between x and y. Right? This one here, I've made an obvious one. We've missed a nonlinearity. Right? We want to fit a model that allows for some curvature. Okay, so these were exaggerated examples, but to try and tease apart the idea of what does it mean to talk about how well your model can predict the outcome versus is it a good fit, right? Because the good fit, I always found when I learned this stuff is a little bit misleading in that this here is a good fit, even though it's not you know, a strong predictive model. Good fit means have we correctly specified the model, right? Is there anything missing from our model? This one here, when we, the red line before I drew in that green, was actually a, a poor fit, right? The model was wrong. Even if it was going to give us good predictions, it was, um, there was a lack of fit there. So what I'm going to do is, I said, go to a separate video, talk a little bit more about some R-squared type measures, what they're trying to get at, and then I'm going to leave, um, oh, and then we'll also in R look at getting some of these R-squared type measures. And I will leave goodness of fit tests to be explored on your own if you want. On the website, there's a link to some material you can read. And in the R code that I provide, there again is some code allowing you to do some of these goodness of fit tests. Stick around, guys. There's more to see, and please stay safe.